Hello everyone, welcome back to Journey Beyond the Abyss. Let me just... there we go. Uh, my apologies for being in a weird position. I got started for a few minutes, was doing all my introductory stuff, and then I realized that, uh, for whatever reason, my recording had failed. Yes, thankfully, NVIDIA's Shadow Play uh, shows little icons over in the corner when it's recording, and... I, I guess for whatever reason, either the recording quit on me, or the hotkey... It, or it failed to start up despite the overlay showing me. So yes, um, you, you haven't missed much. I played for all of five minutes before I realized that something was very, very wrong. The only thing that I said, and what I'm doing right now, is... Uh, why are you out here? Anyway, we are setting up for the dungeon crawl over to our first proper trip into the abyss. And one thing that you'll notice about uh, the dungeon crawl is the abyss has lots of really good resources, and unfortunately there's not many that we can achieve right now. However, I happen to know of one thing that can help us out a little bit in that endeavor. You see, if you Every time the game starts up, you get a whole bunch of text from Millinaire showing, like, the Sadhu and the Alchemist. Those are the Millinaire creation quests, and they are very fancy, very nice, very lovely quests. And there's one of them that we are actually capable of doing. There's an Alchemist who lives not too far away from the island who can uh, give us his quest. But you see, the thing is, in order to start the Alchemist quest, you need a certain amount of reputation with the Normans. Yes, you need to uh, be a friend of the village, and right now our reputation is merely good. So we are gathering up some money in order to do some trades back and forth from the old man to... Let me in. From the old man to the village, carting his wool back and forth. Just to garner reputation and a little bit more money. But eh, the money isn't the point of it in this case. But, uh, yes. What I'm basically going to be doing is I'm going to be buying wool from the old man, selling it to the village for a very slight profit. And just in order to... Uh, do that a little bit faster instead of doing it over and over again because I don't have very much money right now so I can't buy very much wool. I'm just doing one batch of the farmland over here. Get a few stacks of wheat to sell to the cow farm. That'll also be good reputation just on the side. And uh, that'll give me more starting funds in order to better do those wool runs. And hopefully the old man has stockpiled enough wool that... Uh, our, our reputation should be pretty close to the threshold anyway. We've been doing lots of trade with the villagers. But yes, it may seem a little bit weird to be doing... To be gathering up money and reputation just in order to go do a dungeon crawl. But uh, uh, just trust me on this. You'll see where I'm going with this soon enough, I promise. You know what? You 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 just chill over there, Zombo. I would exterminate you, but you look sickly. So you just enjoy your existence. Hmm, he's catching fire. If that disease he's got is uh, clonitis or whatever it's called, he might create a couple of zombies that teleport into the field if he burns to death. So you know what? I've got a good couple stacks of wheat. Let's call that a day for the farming. I can't, ah, for whatever reason, it wasn't starting up my sprint. Is this a pig farm? It is, that's nice. Pig farm is a source of a couple of very lovely products. I think we can get more bones, leathers, pork chops, of course, but also we can get black sausage from them once our reputation is high enough. Yes, 
Hello. Ah, we can buy tripes. We have gotten enough reputation, so never mind that whole wool grinding thing I was going on about. Yes, uh, tripes are very good food. Now, I'm not sure if to start the quest I need to talk to the Seneschal first or not. In any case, I do want to talk to the Chief Questmaster because I think he should have new dialogue for us. In fact, I think he should have had new dialogue as soon as we finished that first dungeon run over into the into the archives. But yes, let's look around to see if the town Seneschal is anywhere available. He usually hangs out like somewhere in the fort. But I guess not. Chief Questmaster, did you find anything interesting? Uh, just a few books on how to survive in the wild, and some psychopath named Jailmaster who lives there? You told me the structure was abandoned. I lied. I just wanted to send you on a quest to rob Jailmaster. Uh, so I risked my life just so I could do your dirty work. Oh, don't worry. I went through the Old Town records while you were away and concluded that diving into the trench is the only way you'll be able to find out what the scientists were working on. What do you mean by that? The records show that during the first few months of the expedition, a makeshift submarine was sent into the trench, but failed to return. However, a week or so later, the wreck, wreck was discovered and remained untouched ever since. Unfortunately, the wreckage is about 80 meters down in pitch black underwaters, in, in pitch black waters, so you'll need to prepare for the dive first. Okay, that sounds fun. Fun. Where can I go get some gear? I know Awesome Dash is selling scuba gear. We use our currency system, so you'll have to earn some money first. Okay, I, I guess I'll be off then. Glacier Forest just shouts from over, uh, over it is, uh, house on the other side of the island. Are you sending another poor soul to the trench? Chief Questmaster says, Look, I was teaching my son how to be an adventurer. It wasn't my fault that the shark was hungry at the time. At least it was the same shark I caught for dinner, and he was still wearing a scuba gear. Besides, a little full-body scarring from the shark's stomach acid and a missing leg, there, there, there was no long-term damage aside from that. Gulp. All right. So let's see if we can find the Seneschal over at the bar or something. He's usually dressed very differently than the villagers, so he'll stand out. Oh boy. Finding someone in the bar is a complete non-starter. Yep. Especially once all the tech starts cutting off their actual details. This is a problem. Yeah, let me out. Okay, start talking to random people. Uh, no. Just see if any of these is looking particularly sensual. like Maybe he's over at the church. They also gather at the church some days. Aha! Uh -huh. Got it from the Padre here. My son, it has come to our ears that you seek knowledge beyond what the Lord has seen fit to grant us. Do not fall into heresy. If you need guidance, you should retire to a monastery and pray for it. God smiles on people wise enough to see the limit of their understanding. But you are young and foolish, and I know my advice will fall on deaf ears until you learn the lesson yourself. So, so have young people always been. There is another man you can go to and see who might be able to help you or convince you of the futility of your search. Though he dabbles in things he does not understand, he is educated and clever. Mm. Do you wish me to guide you to him? Yes, please. His name is Guillaume V. Fargent, and he calls himself an alchemist. I do not have his precise location, but he's known to set up his workshop in the mountains to best observe the stars. Yeah, that's uh, usually the case, but that's a bit of a lie in this case. The alchemist lives pretty much straight due north of the island. Oh, it feels so lovely to have a nice clear view. Oh. That ship with the smoker must be loaded from where my base is positioned. I am going to need to take care of that before that smoke builds up to critical levels. Yes, you see there's interesting things at the base of his island here. Yeah, 
I think pretty soon I'm gonna have to crawl up there and take out those smokers before we get ourselves a problem. But Mr. Guillaume Vifargent, the alchemist. So, you were sent to me to seek knowledge, Doc Robot. You were well advised. I am the only real alchemist you will find in this godforsaken world, my boy. So if you wish to learn from me, you will need to help. I can always use more resourceful young men, and should you be motivated by more than pure knowledge, know that while I have not yet succeeded in turning lead into gold, I have managed to turn alchemy into coins at the royal court. Why, I accept. You can settle in the house outside if you wish to. My assistant and me are far too busy to ever retire to it. So that's just a welcome, but now he has another quest right away. I am currently working on analyzing the rocks of this world. Clearly they're similar to those of the old one in some ways, but their distribution is different. I need samples now, or did you think I'm some kind of useless philosopher to work from books alone? I accept. Good. My assistant will provide you with the tools you need, and rest assured I do not require you to bring me back diamonds. I have already completed my work on those. Well, Mr. Assistant, greetings. I am Master Vifargen's assistant. Do not be offended by his manners. He is a true man of science. Too involved in his work to have time for society. I empathize. But he's very wise, that I know. Anyway, uh, here's your tools. Yes! We get a Norman pickaxe and shovel. The Norman pickaxe is the equivalent of an iron pick, but I think it has more durability. In any case, yes, I was talking yesterday that if I'm not overloaded, I will just use the commands to move around. So, let's go to... Ah, yes, first I should go to my base and set a home. Because I'm going to try not to overload myself while I'm there. Let's not be greedy, not on our first trip. But yes, all that reputation grinding, all that trading we've done, all of it has led us to getting an iron level pick for free, nice and early. The other way we could obtain this is if we... Uh, there's iron blocks to be found out and about. Just in ships, on platforms, stuff like that. And if we donated enough that the village was able to give some to their blacksmith... I think we... No, the armory only sells armor and weapons, so we would not be able to get these otherwise. This is the only Norman pick we're going to find in the game until we build a uh, village ourselves with a wand of summoning, I suppose. Which likely means this is the only Norman pick we're ever going to see, because I have enough Normans in my life already. Now, I've never used the set home command, but I believe it's just home base set, and then I can slash spawn to go over to the platform. Yes, yes, here we are. I'm just going to give that a moment to load in. And without further ado, let's head on down to the abyss. Mm. Yes. That big hole at the bottom of the sea is, in fact, as this sign will tell us, a portal. I think this is just a uh, NPC that's there for some reason. Maybe that causes the chest to respond, but yes! Behold! The first level of the abyss! Now, one thing that we should do right away is I'm going to mark... Portal. Give that a nice yellow color so it's easily visible. And notice that from previous expeditions, there's little air pockets down here. You, someone must have put must have put here before me. Hmm. Either put this here or been here. Either sentence would be valid. Ah uh, yes, and uh, always be careful. The uh the abyssal portals seem to cause dehydration for some reason I've never been able to determine. But yes, we have some wreckage right here next to us already. A mission log, and these are going to be the three books that we're looking for. But, and uh, technically this would be quest, and that would be enough for this chapter. But um, that's not where I'm going to be ending my mission into the abyss. First of all, yes, your eyes are not deceiving you. These are blocks 
of diamond. Oh, goodness, yes. And because we have a Norman pick, they are our blocks of diamond. And doesn't that feel glorious? I'm just going to get a nice full set. Seven, eight, nine, and that's as much as I can carry without becoming overweight. And by my own personal rules, that's as much as I can carry without losing the ability to teleport. Now, there's one more thing that I want to do during my first trip to the Abyss. And that is I'm going to follow these sea lanterns and these little air pockets all the way down. And we need to be a little bit careful because the deeper you go into the abyss, the faster our air is going to start ticking down. Watch the OT over in the corner. It's going to start going fast. So this is going to become a little bit of a issue. Now, this one... This is a major leap down below, so it can be hard to see this particular air pocket. This is a uh, upper shelf air pocket. Just to make that one a little bit easier to find in the future. Very easy to see your way down, not so easy to see your way up. Oh yeah, look at that air go. But just keep on following the lanterns and you'll be fine. These air pockets are very well spaced. I suppose I should have brought a piece of sand and some sugar cane of my own just to make an emergency air pocket, but hopefully we won't be needing it. This could be a very stupid death I'm talking myself into. And here we are, at the bottom of the chain you, that monster looks too strong to fight. Perhaps I can swim around it if I swim fast enough. Yes, the monster down there. Now, we ain't going to fight that. We ain't even really going to get down there. What we're going to do is we are going to immediately remember that we don't have a flashlight so we can't see Jack. Shoot. That's right. I lost my flashlight. Um... Okay, we can do this blind. All I need to do is jump straight down and poke a hole in the ceiling of the monument that I can't actually see. There we go. Yes, this is unfortunately something I can't hold on to. And this would be a quest much later on. Ancient text. I'm going to get... Ah, uh, it's an unfamiliar item. Yes, need to have stage iron. Mm. Darn, not new books to eat. Oh well. Now I suppose the question is, can I see the exit? Yes, I can. Aha! Yes. There is a rather big Mr. Pufferfish down there who uh, is very angry. But we don't need to deal with his guff. And I could teleport back home, but I think I'm going to have another personal rule right here. I can uh, only teleport when I'm not in a dangerous situation. And I consider being at the bottom of the abyss without the equipment to avoid this air compression problem to be a dangerous situation. I need to work my way up at least to the uppermost level before I'll let myself teleport. But yeah. <clears throat> okay. I think I've proven that I can get myself out of danger here. So let's just go home. Uh, home base, forgive me. There we go. Hello. Ah, lovely. And it looks like teleporting also dehydrates us. Also lovely. Yes, let's put the... Uh, well, we can read the ancient text at least. Yeah, let's, let's read the plot ones first. 
Mission Log. Attempting a dive to Monument X. Monument X. Strange, pufferfish-like creatures are attacking the sub, aborting mission. Sub critically damaged, abandoning ship. Rather a dry log. Mm. No, we don't need to keep that. Ancient text. To anyone who reads this, if you found this book, then our civilization has perished, and you are currently sifting through the ruins in search of something. This book was placed here in the hope that someone would find this, and that our civilization would not be forgotten. Pages are missing. That's rather sad. But yes, we have new knowledge, and we have a lovely pile of diamonds. Oh, that feels lovely, doesn't it? Junior blacksmith. Uh, something else. And how to plant trees. Lumberjack and how to plant trees. Or was that? Who knows? Let's see what these are. A fisherman's handbook. That would be one of them. How to plant trees. And metalworking. Really? Good old fiber torches? No thank you. Um, I really don't have a good place to put those, so let's just put those over there. Ah, now. I think I'm going to put away these Norman tools. We'll save those for special occasions. At least until we can uh, properly use them ourselves. But yes, these piles of, of diamond, we can just smash them with a hammer to get the regular old stuff. And they're quite tough to break. You know, I think that I can make... Yeah, I can make a diamond hammer, and its durability is redonkulous. It is, uh, yeah, let's see, 1,500, four, it's like six times harder than the iron hammer to break. That's quite lovely. That will last us a good long time. And with these many diamonds, we could craft a lot of them. Oh, that feels good. Let's just put those kind of... We'll treat them like iron ingots. Now, let's see here. Back to our questing. Well, first let's... Actually, let me show you how good the tripes are compared to melons. Yep. That's what it takes to fill your stomach, and these are worth several uses. And I think very, very later on, if we ever get the capability of enchanting, we can enchant them to be infinite food. But we are going to have to create an anvil, I believe I saw. A copper anvil, yes. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And an ore. I don't have any ore left except in the unknown chest, maybe. Maybe. Yes, what do you know? And we are going to need to paste. I think I will use that hammer to completion and then I will just, uh... Well, no, no. I suppose I could just build a diamond one now. It's not terribly tough. Uh, let's set up the early blacksmithing area. Let's just continue on down the line, I suppose. But yes, the Tinker's Anvil is a lovely little piece of kit. We're going to be using it to build a couple of uh, early things that we're going to need. And uh, where are my... Are those two rod mark ones? Yeah, they are piece of twine, undu quatre, and du diamonds. I think I've remembered how this recipe goes. Will this be the last use of the iron hammer? Not quite, but close enough. Yes, and let's just keep that iron hammer as the backup of our backup. <laughs> And uh, if we ever... 
So, to use the Tinker's Anvil, we're going to need that Tinker's Hammer, but really we're going to be building... Um, we're going to be building this one is what we use. Because, yeah, that's... Um, this is going to... These stone hammers that it wants us to make will go through that real damn quick. But, um... Steel... Stone hammer... Put that on our remember list. And, uh... Diamond hammer. There we go. But I believe we're going to need two refractory clay balls, which thankfully we just have on hand. I also need some more of those. I should build just a whole bunch. Yeah, let's build just a whole bunch. Let's build that many. Ten. Good. And to do that, I'm going to need five of these bricks to smash. And I should be creating some more... some more paste. Yes. Well, let's, let's build those first and then I'll put more paste on. And yes, I know that this is pulp and not paste, but my brain goes in strange places when it comes to words sometimes. And more and more of those. Yes, that very nearly depleted our stock. We need to put some more on the burner, which means I need to build another bucket. Which is just how life goes. Oof, it is getting so chilly. I should... I should build some underfloor heating at some point or another. Yeah, let's make our base decadent sooner or later. Let's make this the, the one true home. But not right now. Not right now. Because to make effective underfloor heating... I would need a means of producing uh, Pyrotech stone torches, I think is what I would like to use for that. Oh, the soaking pots weren't completely empty, I suppose. Well, we'll remedy that. We'll just run some lovely little plants through the cooker. And that will get things going. But yes, back to creating this hammer. And I believe it required two more sticks. I had everything just in my inventory already. And I believe it was five cobbled stone. That's andesite. I need to go buy some cobblestone. Uh, yes, that is one thing. Now that we have a refractory kiln... Burning cobblestone and smooth stone is very, very quick and has no loss. So it is slightly cheaper for us just to buy cobblestone instead of buying smooth stone directly. We no longer have need of buying smooth stone directly, I should say. They are being slow to build that quarry. We need a little bit of cobblestone in order to build something anyway. Actually, I think any any stone brick should work. But let's use cobble. It's traditional. Uh, yeah, let's build that right next to the anvil. So, what I'm building right here is a nice little smelting pit, or I should say blacksmithing pit, a charcoal pit, that will serve to uh, 
heat up our metal. We'll be demonstrating that shortly, once I have a hammer with which to beat the ever-loving crap out of it. First, let's build the crappy quest hammer. And I already have the other materials in hand. Doop doop, doop doop. Good, quest complete. And let's immediately discard that as the garbage that it is and immediately make ourselves a swanky, fancy diamond one of the very same vein. Excellent. Yes, this will last much longer. That stone one, we would be going through that within minutes. Now, how many copper do I want to start? Let's start with eight of them. Build a few of these things. Because our next quest is going to be making these tool rods. Am I taking dehydrate? No, that was a fish air drowning. I thought I was taking dehydration or cold damage or something. But yes, in order to heat up our copper so that it may be beaten into a more useful shape, we need to pile up the charcoal, give it a light, and isn't that lovely? And then let's... I don't quite remember the exact pattern that we're going to need to do. Let me, let me show you what I mean. In order to make a copper tool rod, which is our quest, I am going to need to... Um, can I show you with just one of them? Yes. See, the pattern is set to tool rod. If I set it to something else, then all this down here at the bottom is going to wonk around. It's set to tool rod right now. So what I need to do is I need to get the arrow onto... Uh, the green arrow will move as I use these functions. It'll move up and down. I need to get them matching exactly. But what's more than that is I need to have these commands as part of the move set that gets the arrows there. So, draw any means any of the last three blows has to be draw. And hit last means that the last one has to be one of these three hits. So, essentially the last two moves have to be, uh, well, it, it could be draw something hit, but essentially the last two moves are going to be draw hit. That is what it means. And yes, you see these are very slow to heat up. They cool down when they are not in the forge. I think they lose a little bit of heat each time you beat on them. Each time you beat on them also drains durability from your hammer and a hammer will gladly break on you right in the middle of a craft. That's something I could be doing. I could be burning some charcoal. That jungle tree isn't quite ready yet. I know it looks very tall, but they get much more impressive. Get out of my face, though, please. Thank you. Ah, that's a lovely... Kawink of a dink. Got some myself some uh, jungle pods to finish replanting with. Yes, having a collection of jungle trees growing will be quite lovely. Because they grow very, very tall, they grow relatively quickly, and they give you lots and lots of wood. Those oak trees were a little bit young to be chopped down, but such is life. I think that I can just mix the wood types over on this thing. Yeah, that works. Let's not let it become all the way night. <clears throat> So I'm going to have eight log piles after I finish crafting. Do I have any in storage? Yes, I do. I have enough for a burn. Put the 
this away. And I would have had enough to make another one anyway. Oh, this diamond hammer is going to last for frickin' ever. It's going to last well past the point that we no longer really have need of it as anything except for uh, anviling things. Which I suppose crushing up limestone is a use we're going to need it for a little while longer. Let's cycle another batch of sugarcane. I should also be looking into doing some more limestone and getting another batch of uh, refractory clay going, just because refractory clay is something that we are going to need loads of for quite a lot while longer. Oops. Don't block yourself from filling out everything, Dumbo. And grabby grab. Good. Let's put the acorns away. All right. And has our... Ah, good. Let's just feed that a little bit more charcoal just to keep her going. But yes, I do not remember the pattern. So let's just completely... Uh, I think it was something like... Da, da. Da 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 da. Ah ha ha! I do remember. I do remember. Yes, yes, yes. Da 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 da. That is how it goes. Or rather, I should say, shrink, 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 shrink. Draw, draw, hit. Yes. See, uh, the last two moves were draw and hit, as it demands. And technically, it's. All three are being filled out with draw, draw, hit, but uh, that don't matter. Can I finish before... Ah, yes, I have plenty of time. And I should say it's the second hit. These uh, light, medium, and hard hits do different amounts. But yes, that is the only one I have memorized because we need to make quite a lot of these over time. And I believe I found that pattern through, like, 15-20 minutes of arduous derping. And, uh, you see, making those eight... Yeah, that took a little chunk out of our diamond hammer, but not too much. That would probably go through two or three stone hammers, making that many tool rods, even as efficiently as possible. Stone hammers suck. Don't use them if you can at all avoid it. Even if you didn't, like, get yourself diamonds, I hope that you that you got yourself, like, uh, one of these hammerheads. Make yourself, like, a copper hammer or anything. Anything is better than the stone. It sucks so much. Okay. And I was just jabbering on about how it was time for me to be cycling in some more refractory stuff, because... Our next two quests are making the first two bits of our um, fancy pit burner chamber. So, you'll notice that uh, crushed limestone, yeah, that goes a lot faster now. Do I have any charcoal chips? No, I don't. That's right, we got exact change. Can I make these into charcoal chips? Sure can. Yep, just a single boop. That's all it takes. Now, I am going to try my dang... Oh, right, I have a flint and tinder I've been meaning to get rid of. How many times have I tried it myself for forgetting that? Yep. And if you're fast enough, you can put in another batch of things before the fire goes out. But yes, it's very, very quick how fast it'll go. <sighs> Not quite enough for another batch, so let's find our limestone pebbles and let's get a smashy. Now I think that because we have a diamond hammer, oops. I think that because we have a diamond hammer, these should only take one tap each. Yep. I believe they took two taps of the uh, iron hammer, didn't they? 
Yep, this is luxurious. <sighs> and I believe that also this uh, crushed limestone to quick lime shouldn't have a, it has a failure rate of 1%. Okay, so we shouldn't throw out our change just yet. Ah, uh, good. Anvil. Can we upgrade the anvils yet? No, not really. You know, that shelf I got, that might do a better job than, uh, can I hang that off the side of the kiln? Kinda. Not really, but oh well. Yes. If I make a couple of anvils, like, oh, I don't have any more granite left. Well, we can fix that. I believe this should be a, a nigh instant one in the refractory kiln. Yeah, literally zero seconds. So, oh, right, I still have, I still have flakes in there. Oof. We're carrying 1.27 tons. So we need to toss that over, limp over, set it down. Good. <laughs> you know what? I shouldn't be storing these pebbles. I don't care about these pebbles. I don't care about andesite pebbles. I do care about diorite and limestone pebbles. Basalt chunks? No. Why did I keep these? I guess it was just the general hoarder principle. It ain't hoarding if you're well organized. It's it's pack ratting. Yes, yes. Um, ah, good. We have slaked lime. Let's get another set slaking before we make some more refractory stuff. And let's not bother building another set to put in the kiln. Let's just waste a few seconds of a charcoal flake. It's fine. Yes, you see, those charcoal flakes should burn for 10 seconds. And it should take 4 seconds before the uh, limestone bakes. So I believe that was... It only remained for 1 second longer after the limestone went out. That's... You have one second... Oh, I have a batch in here. Derp. Oh well. You have one second in which to place a new product in there. It is uh, a bit... It is a bit unfriendly, methinks. Let's get some clay going, too. We're going to need more liquid clay in order to make more... Put that away. In order to make more... Uh, clay flint. Let's just always try and be producing refractory clay materials if we can. It's going to require three charcoal. Oh, I already have a set of three right there. What do you know? And we'll be... This icky old flint and tinder will be away from us before we know it. But, yes, grab 32 ashes, grab a stack of clay balls, and let's set out our pattern. There we go. Ah. <sighs> And after this age cycles and we get into the Iron Age, which won't take us too much terribly longer, this refractory clay is going to get easier to produce pretty shortly. There are means and ways of uh, simplifying this process vastly. And JPTA balances itself well where um, it, its complexity 
demands tend to be what you are producing at the exact moment. Like, um, right now we're kind of in the refractory clay age. Next age, we're going to have a whole new set of nightmarish things that are going to be hellish to produce, but refractory clay will become easier. The previous age's materials become much easier, usually. Not always. Sometimes they only become easier because you're just plain more capable. You have more automation capability to do all the grunt work for you. Hello, why you know. There you go. <sighs> oh, not quite 15. You know what? It's fine. Actually, no, how much... Okay, if I make bricks... How long does that... That only takes four seconds. It's worth waiting. Especially since the kiln should be able to take 32 of them now. And we just got a new batch of slick lime. It's clay we're waiting on now. Yes. Speaking of, it's also time that I go hunt up some more clay. I should eat my tripes. I should put away my limestone pebbles. And and I should take care of that steamer before it becomes a problem. That ship next to the alchemist, yes. That is something I could be doing. Ah, uh, yes, and uh, the the quest that we got from the alchemist is... Um, I'm not sure if it's technically completable. Because he, he demands a bunch of things we can find, like lapis lazuli and coal and stuff. Do I have quests here anywhere? Quest master, factions... Hmm... I, I need to look up what the millionaire hotkey is for the quests. But but yes, he's basically demanding a bunch of basic resources that in a normal Minecraft world are dead easy to find. This is just the start of a quest chain. It's uh it's not meant to be difficult. But unfortunately, in JBTA, one of the things he's requesting is plain iron ore. Like Minecraft iron ore. And I don't think we can swing that. Yes. I don't want to dig through the ship because it is loaded with nasties, as you can see on the minimap. But yes, these smokers... We will just... Do I want those for myself for any purpose? Eh, why not? I suppose I could have just gotten through the walls right here. Yeah, these are all unfamiliar items, and they aren't really valuable enough for me to bother keeping them. But uh, smokers might be valuable for something. Who knows? We are almost out of pickaxe. I probably don't have enough pickaxe in order to finish mining this out, do I? Oh well, if needs must, we will punch. Can I just punch? It takes a long time to break if I can. Well, time to find out. Yeah, it's cracking. It's cracking nice and slow. Hello? Oh boy, do I need to go and get a pick? No, that was just uh, weirdness. I think I'll just leave those. No, I can pillar out. Oof, these things are heavy. I can't even see their weight because they're unknown to me. But, yes, that is a... Uh, that is an environmental catastrophe averted in time before it became uh, more difficult to deal with. Yes, if we let that smoker just go, 
then eventually bad effects would start piling up in the chunk and then we would never be able to visit the alchemist again but anyway the alchemist i don't think i can complete the quest because he demands regular old iron ore and i don't think i've ever seen that anywhere in the world um the quest he gave does technically have a time limit it's something like 1024 minecraft hours and I think that once the quest expires, we can even go back to him and get another pickaxe. Just accept the quest again. But uh, 1,024 Minecraft hours is many, many days, so it will be a while, if ever, before we see that. Yes. What the hell am I doing at the moment? Refractory bricks is what I'm doing at the moment. And those are still burning. I don't think I should have been... Oh, okay. They cycled. Yes, I was about to say, that, that should only take three minutes, and I think I was away for well longer than that. Maybe I should get another soaking pot off the crucible to increase the speed of that. Hmm... Maybe. But anyway, yes. It wants us to make these refractory collectors and drains. These aren't going to require a lot, a lot of stuff. Let's see. It's going to take a total of 13 bricks. Can I swing that yet? Mm, technically, but I'd like to have a slightly more efficient burn in the furnace than that. Ah, good. Time to cycle our charcoal. And I say cycle, I don't think I'm going to have anything to replace this with just yet. I suppose I could go buy wood from the village. Eh. Okay, two stacks and 16... And let's just put our change right in the burner until we have a whole stack there. Because those charcoal flakes are good for little, the teeny tiny refractory burns that you tend to end up doing in that kiln. Ah, yes, I do have some slaked lime right there. Good. But I don't have enough clay ball. And I wanted to make another pickaxe immediately. I always want to have a pickaxe on me, just out of general principle. Can you really say you're playing Minecraft if you don't have a pickaxe on you? It seems kind of heretical. There we go. And I should go and buy another flashlight before I forget too. But first, let's go get some more clay blocks. Yes, uh, the flashlight that I lost is just a piece of equipment that I can buy from the NPCs. I, I forget which one. It'll be in a bit of adventure finding them. I'm sure. Yes, there's many different colors of clay under the sea, but they all just become clay balls. And you can distinguish the clay most easily by its lovely, smooth texture. Just gather up a couple stacks, toss that out, get rid of those. Oh yes, did I mention that uh, I finally got my new keyboard, so I no longer have any uh, any wonkiness in my controls. Any wonkiness you see is uh, entirely self-inflicted. Yes. I, uh, I didn't go for anything expensive, I just bought... Uh, I, I was searching, like, by price and reviews, and I bought the first, like, 
four and a half five star keyboard for around 20 bucks i found on amazon i didn't even really look at it i just saw like has like has like six foot cord has uh all the has a is a full keyboard with the uh number pad and all that cool cool yes so when i was when i plugged it in i was very surprised to find that it has rainbow backlighting that i did not actually know about so i i have a little uh prismatic glow going on my desk right now that uh it, it's quite pretty it's not flashing or animated or anything but i've never had a backlit keyboard before so it's new to me and yes yes you see we are quite literally running out of heat before we run out of air ah but the water i guess is not quite cold enough to cause hypothermia and we ran out of shovel before we ran out of anything anyway. And we're running out of daylight. Everything's running down. Oof. Okay, friend. You aren't welcome here. Oh boy. We are too late. an anxiety I'm very well familiar with, desperately trying to sleep my trouble away. <sighs> Looks like a couple of those monsters had a disease, but we managed not to catch it. Actually, you know what, let's swim away from the island real quick just to despawn all the monsters. Yes, that's the uh, fastest way to deal with a bad night is just uh, swim away a hundred blocks or so. I usually find the Alchemist Island is a good distance marker for this purpose. At least off the north side of the island. It's just pop up, pop back, and once we get home again we should find that everything is a lot more peaceful. Ah, yes, there you see uh, another little shelf from the borders of generated lands is my hypothesis but regardless that shelf is uh, a decent enough place to search for resources another point in favor of the location of this base I don't think I'm just gonna keep any of that blood yeah. clean up that blood too it's interesting that it drops in vile form instead of just splattering everywhere. Monsters are very considerate like that, I suppose. Yes, I think we got a nice little harvest of clay. This should be able to last us a good couple of sessions. And now, speaking of, it's time to cycle that. Where did I put? Ah, it's all in my inventory. Excellent. And... Yes. Oops. I forgot to... That's a derp. And now I need to remember that it's uh, going to be 15 now. Yes. Good. And there we go. Let's immediately get another batch of clay melting, too.
just because we need those resources rolling. All right. Good more 11 clay balls to throw on the pile. That's efficient enough that I think I'll just brick that up and burn it. All right, now these have, uh, yep, a four second burn time. It's fine. Now that thing that it's saying with the, with the brick mold, I know that's a thing from the, uh, yeah, that's, that's a thing from Millionaire that this brick mold does, but unfortunately it wears down on the mold itself. How many can I make? Yeah, one per four bricks. Cool. Does this... good. Yes. So if you want yourself some uh, kind of admittedly crappy building blocks, that's one thing you can do. They'll dry in the sun and then I think you can smelt them to get them white and prettier. Ah, lovely. No casualties. Alright. So... I need to make myself some of those filters. Yes. Well, let, let's see here. I'm going to want to... I think I'm just going to make all three of the refractory collectors. So I'm going to need 7, 14, 21 for those. Yeah, I have enough bricks. And yes, I'm overbuilding. I only technically need to build one of each for the quest, but oh well. So... I'm going to need one, two, three charcoal filters, and no more for that. So, that's relatively easy. I'm just going to need all my paper. I think I'm going to need more paper. And I should be making more pulp. I believe pulp is part of the recipe, too. And, and all right, I need to sort away the monster junk. There we are. Let's get some more pulp on the make. I have a bucket on me with a full eight uses. Yes, yeah, so a two each. There we are. That'll get us another stack of pulp to play with if the lag will let it. And I'm going to need some wool, which I don't have in stock. So let's go visit the old man. There's a couple of buildings that I could be stealing wool from, but that feels rude to me. A lot of work went into these NPC buildings, you know? I, I don't like to be cannibalizing them any more than is absolutely necessary. I think that technically when we uh, cut a hole in the forest, we cut that through Glacier Forest's house. Let's just buy a half stack of wool. That should last us for a little while. You really shouldn't use cobwebs as bunting. That's just rude. Now, I know that these filters that we're building, let's put these in monster drops. They use, uh, let's see. Yeah, it's papers on the cardinal directions. There we go. And then it's uh, pulp on those. That gives us our item filters. And that'll get us our filter filters. And I even have enough paper for it. Though obviously we'll be manufacturing more. 
And from there, yes, that's literally just uh, pretty much all we need. And I am being excessive making three of these. I only need one for the quest. I only need one for the mechanism that is going to be using it. But we are building for the future here. Yes. These refractory collectors, as I believe I mentioned before, these go on the lowest level of our pit burn. And even just by having these as they are now, Oh no, right, right, right. I remember. They don't go on the lowest, lowest level. They go on... Uh... Yes, because we needed the platform raised up so that it could just pour straight in to a... Uh... to a uh, soaking basin or tank or what have you. Yes, yes, I remember how I laid that out now. And we are going to need three wood chips. Doop, doop, doop. And just lay out almost all of our bricks. That feels terrible over on the sides of it. Now, we just put this right here, facing outwards. And what that will do is, when we pit burn charcoal on top of these collectors, they will collect tar. This drain will scan all the blocks within its reachable area, which I believe this drain can go up to a 5x5. Five five. Oh, these dried to white. This drain can go up to a 5x5 five five area, so these refractory burn pits can go quite huge. And the drain will pull all the liquid from the collectors. So if we just put a uh, spigot, a faucet, a tap, whatever it's called. Um, da, da, da. Is it tap? Is it faucet? It's faucet. Yes, if we just put a faucet on there, and I don't think I'm going to build a refractory one. Three, two of those, and I believe the rest was just a bunch of pulp. Yes. Then we will find that we can simply pour out into a pot. Speaking of, let's make a nice little pot in which to pour it into. It's always nice to have at least one pot for each individual type of liquid. Let's see, I think that was da, two, three, four. Yeah, I got one too many bricks. And I'm also going to need some actual proper wood logs. I wish I had that sawmill working right now. Mm. Will you hold up? You will! You're a hero. Lovely. Your sacrifice is appreciated, chopping block. Good. And there we have it. Now all we need is enough wood to do another pit burn. And this also opens up um, the ability to make pyrotech torches. Because, um, ooh, stone torch. Neat. Speak of the devil. Let me test right now and see if these stone torches give off heat. We should see ourselves uh, watch our jewel as I witter on. But yes, uh, what this is going to open up is we're searching for the bloomery. And to make the bloomery, we're going to need this tarred plank. So to make that, we're going to need some boards and we're going to need some wood tar, a very tiny amount of wood tar in fact. Now unfortunately for this we're going to need to get the smelter running or, or, or we're going to need to get the... no. Hmm. I know that fiber torches heat you up, but I guess these don't. Then I guess that these are useless to me. Yeah. Such a pity. But yes, we won't uh, we won't be using 
any type of pyrotech torches as a light source. They give off half the light of Minecraft torches. Uh, I should have put half of those into the paper. Oh well, we'll do that next time. And I just noticed that I have paper on my tables. But yes, we need to get the sawmill going in order to make the tarred board for our blue Marie. So to do that, we are going to need some more diorite. To do that, we're going to need to go dig gravel because I don't know a better source right now. To do that, let's build ourselves a shovel and just get a digging. Yep, ain't nothing for it sometimes. <sighs> just find a pile of gravel. I think any color of gravel is going to have equal chances of uh, dropping all the types of pebble. At least we're going to get a nice collection of flint out of this deal. That's also something that we're in need of, at least for the moment. Where did I pick up a sponge? Must have got it from the grass, I guess. Interesting. I just saw a diorite pebble. Let's put that on our bar just so that we can keep tabs on it. <sighs> and yeah, I think I'm just gonna run down this entire shovel and we'll see how many pebbles that gets us. I technically have enough in hand now to make a saw blade, I think, because I have some more diorite pebbles up in storage. In any case, it only takes 9 plus 8, so uh, yes, I, I do have enough just in hand right now. But yeah, that, that's about on par of what you need to do is you need to deplete a uh, flint or bone shovel in order to get enough diorite to make a single saw blade. So the diorite grind is very real. You might even call it dire. Okay, andesite, don't care. Granite, don't care. Stone, don't care. Don't care about hemp or plant fibers. Oak sapling, you can go too. Only care about the D. You heard me. Okay, how many cobble do we want to make? Let's see. I think I can make one more. And then... Yeah, that leaves me with with enough to surround it twice. Good. Excellent. And let's just immediately turn that into saw blades. Because that's effectively the only use I ever have of for diorite. And... A dupe dupe. Do note that saw blades do not stack, so don't make too many of them all at once. Let's dry that sponge out just in case we ever have a use for it. Now, to upgrade it, we just need to surround it with an appropriate material. In this case, we just need our flint shards. And 
and that vastly increases its durability. But unfortunately, I know from painful experience that the regular uh, sawmill cannot take iron blades. And you'll notice the next tier up is the bone blade, requires a flint surrounded by bone. And that, unfortunately, uh, just don't work. And in any case, can I make these iron shards? Yeah, I can just shatter an ingot to make the iron shard. So I can make an iron saw blade. I just can't use it at the moment. Not without uh, doing a bit more grinding of refractory products. But that don't really matter right now. What do matter is that we have a lovely new device to play with. And I'm just going to give that a small amount of fuel. And yep, there it goes. This thing works fairly quickly. Uh, I would guess that was around five seconds. Five seconds per craft or so. And that is turning our uh, logs into planks. And then we can turn our planks into slabs. And I think boards is the next step after that. So yes, this is much less resource investment, even with the direct grind, than going for uh, a chopping block, especially since it's nice and semi-automated. Um, when I come back, we'll see that it has a pile of wood chips around it, so we get wood chips as a byproduct. And especially later on, once we can um, get a refractory going, yes. And notice that it's getting uh, it's getting me multiple planks per wood. Yeah, we didn't get that deal out of the chopping block. So let's just keep the chopping block as an emergency solution, though, and just as a reminder of what we could be dealing with. You guys are done. Yep, just dry mud bricks. Slightly prettier than the dirt walls we bought from the Normans, I suppose, but so much harder produ to produce considering that it causes durability damage to our brick mold. Sponge. And we just kind of want to listen to the background noise for uh, when the saw sound stops happening. Let's put this in plant products. Yes, we are going to be flush with wood chips for a little while. Ah, good. We now have a lovely source of wood planks. Do I have any uses for wood planks beyond just, like, making unspawnable area? Yes, I could be making more storage crates out of it. I suppose. But really, it's, it's just an intermediary step on the way to producing boards. These wood chips, we're probably going to have to start compacting into, uh into this, which is something we can pit burn, in fact. But not right now, because I don't have a shovel in hand. Let's start building one of those. I am out of bone chips. Let's make a couple of bone chips. Lovely. Now these copper tool rods, we, we need one just plain for the bloomery, but we can also use them to produce these tier 2 tool sticks, which is what you need to make the hammers other than the diamond hammer. They can be used to produce twine slightly faster and more efficiently if you find yourself in need of it. 
And uh, that's what you use to make fishing rods if you want to uh, put fish into your diet. Now these boards, I can just make these straight into compressed sticks. So compressed sticks are now much easier to produce. And uh, as you saw, they'll also be, oh, right. I need to shit to burn to make wood tar. That was something I was, should have been doing derp. Oh, well, let's see. Five, six, seven, eight. Do we have? Oh, we don't have quite an. Wait, wait. Six, seven. Yep. We are going to have enough after all. Huzzah! Thank you, Sawmill. Truly, you have gifted us a bounty. get a couple of plug locks wood chips are much uh, less impressive a result than uh, burning log piles we're only gonna get lots of charcoal flakes but we are going to get coal tar out of it and it's what we got available at the moment oops I should keep my fire starter on a slot yep and that's just a way of getting rid of uh, of wood chip piles, which you are going to get a lot of if you're going to start using the the sawmill a whole lot. Which yeah, why not? Let's keep on compacting things down. I think I need to make another granite anvil, don't I? I distracted myself from that. And in fact, I was going to make a couple of them just to have them in storage. Yeah, oh, I need more andesite. I threw out my andesite chunks, didn't I? Well, let's gather up some more andesite. That's a nice, easy trip. I see another ship with smokers. But it's not piling up pollution above it, so I guess it must not be loaded when we're just running around in our base, but it looks like it's closer than the other one. So why isn't this one spawning pollution? Mystery. Don't like myself a mystery like that. Let's gather ourselves a goodly amount of andesite. Let's not run down the whole pickaxe, if only because I think I'm out of tier one tool rods. So I would need this one to smash myself some more. That's another thing that the next age will uh, gift us with is it will become much easier to uh, create the basic tools. Let's throw those two out. Let's just call a, a half stack of andesite good enough for now. That will last a lovely long time if we're just using it for the anvils which is I think well I, I guess technically there's the work tables too so there's two uses I know of andesite for and I think those are the only two I know of how are the jungle trees going slow and steady I should expand the tree farm a little. Hmm. Another item on the agenda, I suppose. Yes. Good, it has another 
charcoal in there. Solidify my andesite. Lose one. Mourn it. Move on. Yes, let's make as many of those as we can carry, I suppose. That means I'm going to need 12 bricks. And I think it was paste, wasn't it? No, it is in fact wood chips. Well, good thing that we're now getting lots of wood chips. Yes. Now, are these a shovel or axe? It's axe. But that is needlessly using axe power for something that's relatively fast to do by hand. And right now, axes are not trivial to produce or repair. Ah, lovely. Just keep on the burning. Let's feed you another charcoal just in case. Yes, there we go, that's lovely. And let's in fact turn these into compressed sticks just to put in our collection. Indeed. There we go. Now we have a lovely collection of anvils for, uh, oh, they stack. Neat. And uh, we'll just have those as backups and when we run out of backups, we'll create a, uh, a new collection of them. Resources permitting, we'll see if we can like produce a stack of them or something. As our wood chips know. Uh, what was I doing? I suppose I could be making more refractory bricks. That's always a lovely, useful thing to be doing. Yes, do I have any more limestone anywhere? Good. Let's put that... Za... And za... Just put it right next to each other so we can switch back and forth very quickly. Wish I had a hopper to just put it on for me and make this completely mindless. But we're getting close to that point. I think technically we can make uh, mechanical hoppers. No, that's next age. <laughs> And we probably lost a little bit of efficiency just letting that run down. Oh well. Let's, uh, yeah, let's start processing that. Three, one thousand, four, doop, doop. Yep. If you're sneaky, if you're fast, you can just put it right in there. Doesn't even cost you an extra charcoal bit because uh, because in total the crafting time will be like 9 seconds instead of 10. Let us get us a new bouquet. Fill her up and slick it down. Because that's the processing chain right now. Lovely. And yes, I remember I made some clay to pour already. And I should get another set going pretty much right away because uh, I will have enough slaked lime for it, too. Yes, I'm not going to need 
a mere 16 flint, I'm going to need a full 32 of it. So let's make some more flint powder to accomplish that goal. Just produce a nice big batch of it. Ah, that diamond hammer is going to be around forever. It's glorious. Slightly more than I could handle at the moment, but that's okay. We will resolve that soon. Let's see, has our... it has! Yes, you see? We can just pour out the coal tar. Nice and easy and lovely. Looks like we got one, two, uh, two ish buckets. I think that if there's an uneven amount, it'll still pour out into the bin. But uh, yes, this will just be our coal tar soaking pot because it's nigh impossible to get even ratio on it. Let's just uh, put that over there. Let's make a bunch of tarred boards just while we're at it. I think those are useful for a couple of things. Doop, doop, doop. Seven. Why seven? Why you make seven? That's bizarre. That was utterly... I did something wrong and it's probably uneven now. Oh well. And did I... No. Oh! Have clay balls and dirt. Yes, I got distracted by something as I am wont to do. And forgot what I was in the process of doing. As it goes. Tarred boards! Yes, these, I think... Yes, the big use I want to make for these is uh, making all my storage durable. And that will mean that they can store multiple stacks per slot. So our little storage system will be much vastly expanded um, as necessary. And also the stashes. I think I wanted these tarred boards for... Uh, I just wanted to immediately go for a durable stash. But that is one use that we needed the uh, sawmill for, is making lots of planks, which I believe I've... Uh, I don't think I have enough for a stash on hand. No, I'm one short. Oh well. So it goes. 15. That's disturbing. Will you clean out that last? Will, will you give me even ratio? Probably faster to eat my tripes down. I want to get rid of them anyway. Yes, that looked like four and a half ham hocks. And I believe it gives quite a lot of saturation too. Tripes are very tasty. Very good uh, battle food in that it'll give you a hefty amount of saturation that you can uh, rely on to heal you for a little while. But let's make that bloomery, I suppose. That's going to require a lot of refractory bricks. I should have remembered that. Uh, so you know what? Let's speed up our refractory brick making process by uh, making us first another tap that we can take off the back of the 
uh, crucible in order to get more soaking pots going. But yes, that's going to require. And uh, what was it's it's paste is what it uses. Yes. Yes. A new tap. And then those. I don't have any logs in storage that I could put on the sawmill. Let's let's see what the yield on our tree farm is at the moment. Those are looking like we got a couple of tall trees. I should fill that in. Let's cut it down that way so it doesn't fall into the water. Uh, trees will fall in the opposite face of what you cut. So you see I was cutting that face, so it's going down that away. I hope we didn't hit anyone over at the church. But yes, that one tree got us 42 wood. It's, uh, it's quite spectacular, the amount of wood you get from a jungle tree that has grown up. And these I don't think were even technically fully grown. Yes, we've already weighed ourselves down beyond base carrying capacity. We might actually, if I cut down all of these, yeah, we're definitely going to be to the point that we can't actually move. Note that uh, even when you're weighed down, you can still swim pretty quickly. So having a processing area, a farming area where uh, you're picking up heavy stuff, having it with easy water access can make your job much easier. Let's pick up that seed pod just because seed pods are uh, something that is in short supply right now. But I believe that... Uh, even in water, I won't be able to move once I'm fully encumbered. Let's just test that theory, shall we? Oh, what do you know? Yeah, even loaded down fully, I believe this is the max weight. I would not be able to move if I were on land, but in water I can. So yes, uh... Having water patches in your tree farm is a strategy that I fully support. Yes, you see, as soon as I'm on land, I'm hitting my keyboard trying to move around and I can't. Because I am loaded. So just kind of need to toss them forward. Get these to the table. I suppose that if I really wanted to go into engineering, I could make like a, a sort of aqueduct layer in the base so that I could swim around with heavy loads, but eh, that's smarter than I can build. Like the base as it's laid out now is literally just going to be a big box with a pyramidal roof. and. My way of making it pretty will be to simply, you know, make the walls out of pretty blocks with a basic pattern on it. That's about the best I can do. Let's guess 16. That's looking like that might be a good guess. And that still gives us a nice amount of wood to go and uh, put on the sawmill. Excellent. Let's just put that away for the moment. Um, let's plot out 18 
wood in total and turn the rest of that into log pile. Yep, that sounds that sounds fair to me. Especially since it gives us nice even ratio. There we go. And in fact, let's get a burn going. Yep. Because uh, we can now cycle that out. Yep, and notice that because we were burning wood chips, we don't get any solid charcoal. We just get tons and tons of charcoal flakes. But tons and tons of charcoal flakes is kind of nice to have, too. Let's fill up our refractory as best we can. It can store up to 32. Okay. So, a stack and eight. Store the rest of our change away. We've almost uh, earned ourselves up to a quarter stack of charcoal blocks. if I can pour off that back side. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'll just pour off the other side if I have to. And of course, by the time we have, uh, by the time we've gotten the resources together to increase the speed of our production, we're almost done producing anyway. So it goes. Can I actually pour off this side? Let's find out. And let's uh, keep the production line going. I suppose that if I was really determined I could get a bucket and transfer over two into that one, but eh. We have a stack of slicked lime. We will shortly have uh, we will shortly have 32 flaked flint, and then we're just going to need two stacks of clay balls, which we already have, and we'll be able to make ourselves a lovely pile of uh, of refractory clay. Yes, let's clean this up. I do think that there are arrangements of uh, the sawmill that you can make if the game will stop lagging, please. I, I do believe that there are arrangements of the sawmill you can make that will avoid piling up any wood chips and they'll just be deleted. But in the meantime, they are a resource that we occasionally have uses of, so uh, why waste? Is that done yet? Nope. What could I be doing at the moment? Hmm. Nothing and much seems to be the answer. Could I suppose... 
Yeah, let's run over to the village and get a stack of cobble to make into masonry bricks. I think we're lowish on masonry bricks. It's also nice to occasionally check in and see how the village is doing. Yes, you'll notice that a lot of... There are some new buildings. You can tell that they're new because they're made out of dirt walls. I think all the houses were wood at the start. But also, a lot of old buildings are getting gradually upgraded. Um, I think we saw a tree farm that was new out front. Masson de Garde. Hmm. They need iron for something. All right. Um, oh, right. I meant to turn those into planks as well. Oh, well. It's fine. Yes, we are building up a little bit of a pollution cloud above our base. Nothing dangerous quite yet, but the fact that uh, I don't have much grass or near my uh, production area means that that carbon is going to build up a little bit until I can deal with it. I don't think I'm anywhere close to being able... Yeah, pollution filters I think are... Not even the next age. They might be the age after that. Lovely. So, we're just going to pour... Un... Again. Yes. So, just pour two in each. And then I can create 16 flint balls at a time. That's quite lovely. Ah, there's the flint powder. Good. Good. Things are progressing exactly as planned. Dupe. 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 And dupe. And that is just how fast you can dupe it. Away with you. You offend my sensibilities. Alrighty then. Let us build a nice collection of refractory clay. Hopefully enough to get our job done for the day. I need a full stack of ash. Doop doop. Oh, and there's a second derp of the day. Huzzah! Need to lay out a whole 31 of this. There we go. And here we go. I wonder if we're anywhere close to breaking the table yet. I don't think we should be. These tables last quite a while. Neat. A nice even stack of refractory clay. And I think we have exact change on previous generations, so... Oh, that's not shapeless? I didn't know. What the heck is going on? Oh my god, can we not use the brick mold because it's been damaged? That's just fantastic, isn't it? It says we can't. Oh, I was just, again, in the wrong place, I think. Nope. Yep. We can't use a damaged brick mold. Well, I don't think I'm ever going to be using those mud bricks, so uh, let's just make another one of those. Yet, yeah, thankfully, we had a spare refractory brick. That would have been depressing if we didn't. I'm just going to need six of those tier ones. I think we already have two filters on hand. 
and fry six. And it's going to take two, three bricks. And a whole ton of paste, which I might need to start making some more. No, maybe not. There we go. And I believe the rest of it was, yep, it's just a bunch of that. Well, that was very nearly disastrous. Let us never use this for its actual intended purpose again, because, uh, yes, this is something that is entirely JBTA talking that uh, stone brick thing that we uh, were using it for that is that is uh, or, or mud brick I should say that is the native millionaire purpose of the mold over there but yes we don't have enough we are going to need 35 bricks in order to make the seven masonry so let us keep on crafting Quite enough. Didn't I? Yeah, I don't have a pile of slaked lime anymore. So just time to smashy smashy. Always a lovely time. Actually, wait, did I need Marie? Yep, that's going to take seven refractory bricks, and those take five each, so that's going to take 35 bricks. Mm-hmm. Welcome to JBTA. Again, thankfully, though, we have the infrastructure, so most of this is getting easier as we go. If I'm going to make a full stack of slaked lime, I should make some more clay balls to match it. And actually, I think that is enough. Yep. Maybe I should move my fuel to a box that's closer to the machines. Maybe. Smashy, smashy, all the rocks. Smashy, smashy, what the f... Uh, just remind yourself with each and every smash that you're getting one smash closer to an easier production chain of all this. Just right at the end of the... of the And, and once we get that bloomery, this age is pretty much going to be over because the bloomery is just a uh, crappier way of making iron. And you see the iron ingot, of which we already have quite a few... That is just uh, what we're building up to. But yes, the, the game wants to prove that we can make iron the non-cheaty way, I suppose. The non-steely way. No casualties. I mean, even with the rate as uh, 
low as 1%, that's still kind of rareish for a whole stack. Ah, good, that's done. I have enough for another batch. And yes, note our collectors are filling up down there. We are building a uh, collection of wood tar now on top of all our other collections. Shoot. No, it's going. It's going. I covered it fast enough. It's going. Okay. Any more use for flakes anywhere? I guess not. Oof. Two stacks and sixteen and chain. Is that done yet? Yes, it do. And there we go. Lime is a slicking away. There's the other. And then we are going to need two more stacks of clay balls. And I think I can just start laying out my pattern right now. And a full stack of ash. And don't derpily just hammer away at it as soon as you have one recipe down this time. Oh, right. I'm so looking forward to having a proper damn crafting table. That's just something that uh, you don't know how essential it is until you're missing it, you know? How poor are you in Minecraft to not even have a crafting table? But then again, suddenly having it feels really like you've earned it. Feels fantastic. And we're almost there. We weren't deprived of it for too terribly long, in the grand scheme of things. Is this recipe actually shapeless? Yes, it is. So yes, as soon as it failed, I should have known that something was awry. Let's just bake the whole damn thing. I know that's probably hubristic, and I'll need to make another set inevitably for, uh, like, I think that uh, refractory clay balls can be made into... Slime balls. Yes. But uh, I don't think we're going to need slime until the next age. 
So let's burn. Oof. Lovely. Two losses. Always depressing when it happens to something as expensive as refractory bricks. At least until they become inexpensive. But yes, that is... I don't have enough paste. I don't have enough bucket. for the paste gods. It's getting awful dark out. Is that just because it's storming? I guess so. Let's lay out our pattern at the very least. Actually, I probably do have enough paste. Oh well, it's good to be producing more anyway, especially when we're running low. And uh, yeah, eventually, all these siding blocks for our pit burner, we're gonna re gonna want to replace them for these refractory bricks, because that will increase the efficiency and it will allow us to burn uh, coal blocks to create coke blocks. So uh, yeah, that is going to be waiting until we have cheaper and faster recipes for making refractory bricks, of course. But it will be happening eventually. If I'm going to be building a luxury pit burner, I might as well build it all the way. That, and I think we are eventually going to need coal tar. Let's see, was it that way? It do! The Blue Marie! Lovely, lovely stuff. This machine is a very slow operator. But it will allow us to actually smelt a bit of iron ore. I'm only gonna make one. But yes, in the bloomery, that takes a full 24 minutes to do. And uh, yep, you just need two blocks of charcoal in order to get yourself 26 minutes, so. And there is a way to speed it up. If I get myself a set of bellows, which I actually can do no problem. But you know what? That sounds like a problem for next time. Ah. <sighs> this is, uh, yep. Yeah. We have made a lovely advancement for the day. This thing shall be our friend in the next. In the meantime, have yourself a lovely evening.